I'm German. I grew up in Germany in the 80s and 90s. And NASCAR was some very foreign, some that I completely did not understand. And uh, after watching Days of Thunder, I was sort of hooked. Didn't really know what was behind that, but I was hooked. Eric Amorola, who my buddy Matt has a personal connection to, invited us both to come to the race. How can you say no? What are we doing? Room, room, we're going to the race. Not this race. <laughs> we are in St. Dimas right now or Pomona or uh, Fontana. I actually don't even know. It seems to all blend together. It's a lovely neighborhood. Pass acquired. Party time, excellent. Here's my setup for shooting. Pancake, Q-Flash. sure what happened here but this guy is telling me it's not charged I had it fully charged this morning Matt what do you have to say about that if you didn't have enough coffee this morning oh gosh but I have a hot pass we get in a couple hours before the race so we have some time Matt suggests we go walk around the infield a little bit where people um, camp and uh, just check out the scene. It's, you know, it's a pretty narrow demographic that uh, I usually don't get to see and that I definitely am not used to being from Germany. Okay, we're in the driver's area. We're gonna do a little walk, explore around. We are now going into the RV area. What a nice spot to have a little campground, hang out, see nature. Perfect. What are we thinking? thinking 200 laps for 400 miles, two hours and 36 minutes. Okay, we just made our rounds around the uh, RVs for a little bit. We're gonna try to go into the pits right now. See how far that will take us. That's kinda cool. Turns out it wasn't that interesting. For some reason it wasn't, just didn't, I don't know, people were semi-funny, so we just walked back. We end up going into Eric Almarola's RV, and we hang out with him for a little bit. He's having lunch, we're chatting. I decide not to film anything in there. I kind of wanted to give him his privacy right before the race. I was kind of perplexed by how he was about to hop in that car and go around this track, you know, doing 180 plus miles per hour amongst all these other crazy dudes doing the same thing, all fighting for position. And he was just sort of hanging out, having lunch, and then eventually told us, hey guys, I need to change, so, you know, I'll come out in a second. That was funny. While we're in there, this couple comes in that we have no idea who they are. I actually still don't really know who they are. But we walked to the track with them. Tailgating! You wanna see what I brought? What'd you bring? Canned fish, rice, avocado. Canned fish? Yeah, why not? For some good breath? Uh-huh. Canned mackerel, no, rice. Oh, have... you're gonna make some sushi? Well, not sushi per se, but... Look at that. Matt's still tailgating. I'm trying to stay in the shade. It's hot. We just got to hang out in the uh, RV for a moment. It's nice and cool. And now we're going to Pit Row. Here, we go. Here, I'll just do one of these. Oh, right? oh, oh, oh. Thank you, Matt. We're squeezing, we're squeezing. Hang on, yeah, I have all these like... Perfect. We're good. Now what? To the track.
into the pit area and I'm starting to realize that we're walking through more or less a channel that is lined with all the photographers and all the fans just cheering and yelling for Eric and Matt and I have no idea what we're about to walk in here so kind of like being put on the spot uh, that was pretty funny that was pretty funny I felt a little awkward I didn't uh, I had no idea that I was gonna walk into that good good we liked it and of course they're all yelling for Matt and I you know I mean of course okay, where are we right now uh, we're in the middle of the track uh, in the middle of some chaos I think it's gonna mellow up pretty soon we're gonna be up and see the car watch Eric get in and race will start thing right now so we're waiting for that to be done and then we're gonna walk over to the car trying to find a good spot to shoot to start from and there isn't really a good spot there's no elevated position there's the exit of pit lane is sort of guarded off and um, we're standing around for a couple minutes trying to figure this out and finally we actually leave pit lane and walk up a little bit we found the spot good view at least the best we could find we'll, we'll try to see the start from here i wonder if we walk down a little bit and shoot more into it yeah i'm tempted to like run back and get my 7200 you're not gonna make that yeah i think the engines are on I mean, I've, I've been around races. This was so loud. An insult to the senses, really. The smell of gasoline, the noise, the heat. It was a super hot day. We were just getting fried. It was crazy. So we stand there for like two laps or so and they're just flying by going 180. And uh, then we're kicked out by some security person that just let us stay there for the start. That is loud. We might be able to get a pair of uh, earphones. It is a little bit loud. that after about five minutes or so our ears are just ringing like you can't have a conversation and it's actually starting to hurt I'm starting to like there's a wall behind us too in the pits it just echoes everything right back at us so it's uh, just ear deafening and painful so one of the team members of Eric's um, ends up giving us some earplugs which helps it kills all conversation. I, a couple times I say something over to Matt and he doesn't even react. He doesn't hear me at all.
at that point, we just sort of take it in. There's no chatting, no conversation goes anywhere. There isn't a whole lot to do. So we just take in what's happening, watch the pit stops, and um, kind of experience a NASCAR race from the pits. That's really what we did. It is hot. The sun is just smacking down on us. It's starting to get a little boring. After the first half hour, we more or less saw what was there to see. So we decided to walk over into the grandstands and get a different perspective. That is actually pretty cool. The, the view was pretty amazing. The, the snow-capped mountains behind the track and seeing the whole track more or less, the oval from way up in the grandstands, that was actually a cool visual. <laughs> done we are um, just kind of done so we walk through the pits one more time same old thing there's cars going by going meow, meow. and people are walking around the pits so we decide we're gonna get out of there before um, all hell breaks loose and all these guys are trying to get out of the area we have this idea to hop in the water either in Malibu or up north so we're excited about that we're gonna do one more run through the pits see how they're all doing kind of fried We'll see how long we stay. We're out of here! Where's that? Colin Farrell? That was uh, pretty exhausting. Being on asphalt is exhausting. Yes. Hot. Loud. Time to uh, maybe go for a little surf. Okay. Let's Ooh. eat the crunchy Cheetos we scored. And get the flock out of here. Woo. 87 degrees. 87 degrees. Fair. We're gonna get a little evening surf. We find a little spot just north of Ventura. It's not a whole lot of surf, but it's enough. It's about, you know, half hour, 45 minutes before sunset. It just felt so good getting in the water for a little bit, catching a couple little waves, cooling down, actually being in nature. It's peaceful, it's calm. That's it. Sun setting. Matt's still out there surfing, somewhere out there. I'm done, I got cold. First so hot, now so cold. It was a good day. Good day. Good day! It's totally steady. In a nice flat rock. Totally flat. The one thing I do have to say about NASCAR is that they operate very much unlike Formula One where the driver is more or less the one that has most of the responsibility. They don't have a whole lot of uh, technology in those cars, so the driver really has to do most of the job. It's, um, it's good old driving, that's what it is, and I have to give everyone their kudos for that. Good old driving. Thank you for watching a German experience at NASCAR and we'll see you next time.